Gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ and life in him. We thank you that we can come together with those of like precious faith and get into your word. Heavenly Father, we, we're one of, one of the few in this world who, who depend and, and look for understanding from your holy scripture. So we ask you bless our time together tonight. May you give us greater insight and understanding and wisdom uh, from your word and about your son. May it be glorifying to you, Father, and edifying to us. We thank you for that in Christ's name. Amen. All right, Colossians chapter number two, if you will. Colossians chapter number two. And uh, we continue our look verse by verse through our Apostle Paul's book of Colossians. Now, uh, I, I recognize that there's probably, uh, even on, on, on the internet, as far as the internet, there's people who probably never seen this ministry, and they probably come, up, come uh, along. Today's um, study, today is Wednesday, the 14th of October, 2015, and it's completing him. So if somebody typed that in, uh, we probably come up and to see what it means to be complete in Him, complete in Christ. And the book of Colossians is a book of higher doctrine. It is a book that shows the believer's loyalty or faithfulness to the Lord Jesus Christ. Whereas Ephesians is a book written by the Apostle Paul showing God's devotion to us as believers. By the time you get to Colossians, it shows our faithfulness to Him, our service to Him. Uh, look with me at chapter number 3, and let me show you here at verse number 24. Look at chapter 3, verse 24. Uh, this book of Colossians is about the believer and his faithfulness or her faithfulness to the Lord. Verse 24, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. The book of Colossians is about serving the Lord Christ. Now remember, Romans 16, Paul says, not everyone serves our Lord Jesus Christ. You can be a believer today and yet not serve the Lord. If you do not serve the Lord, you will not receive the reward of the inheritance. That is given for faithfulness. And so the book of Colossians, Ephesians and Colossians, they go together. They're like husband and wife. Ephesians is like the church or the wife. Colossians is like Christ or the husband. And one is God's devotion to us, Ephesians. Colossians is our devotion to the Father, or to the, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at chapter number 2 in verse 8. Go back to chapter 2, where we left off in verse 8. Here's a warning from the Apostle Paul. If you're a believer, Paul's going to warn us. A, a preacher warns and teaches. In verse 8, Paul says, beware. And when you see that word beware, and I always ask the brothers who from... Korea, um, what that is, if it's, it's the sense of that, how do you say that word, beware, you're giving a warning, you're saying, hey, there's danger ahead, right? Beware. Now, what's the danger for us believers? Beware lest any man spoil you. Now, that word spoil means to take what's rightfully yours. Remember when, when someone conquered a land and they went into that land, they would spoil the people of that land to conquer them. Where Satan will use men to take away from you what God has for you. Notice he says, beware lest any man spoil you. Go down to verse 15. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ did. Look at verse 15. Speaking of Christ, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Now, when we get there, you're going to see it's the cross, the, the work of the cross, that took back from Satan what Satan had taken from God. When we talk about God's kingdom, Genesis 1-1. Genesis 1. And it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the focus of your Bible from Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, all the way over... So Acts chapter 9, where the Apostle Paul is saved. Saul, who's also called Paul, Acts 13. The entire focus of the prophetic scriptures, Genesis through Malachi, the Old Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four Gospels, four Gospels, as well as Acts, Acts is the bridge, the transition, it's been about the earth. 
God's plan and purpose to redeem the earth, to reconcile the earth. It's not until you come to the Apostle Paul that God's program for the heavens, Paul calls it in Ephesians, the heavenly places, the heavenly places is revealed. That's what Paul calls the mystery. God kept this part of his program secret, okay? And it was revealed in Paul's epistles, Romans through Philemon. So all the epistles of Paul speak about this mystery of Christ. Then after the rapture, God is going to begin dealing with the earth again. So he's going to go back dealing with the earth, and he's going to bring an earthly kingdom by the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the gospel of the kingdom, the second coming. And that is Hebrews. He's going to deal with the Hebrew people again through Revelation. So those books look forward to that earthly kingdom that the Lord Jesus Christ will set up at his second coming. But what God is doing today is called the mystery in the heavenly places through the body of Christ. The body of Christ is only mentioned to Paul. The body of Christ. You can't find the body of Christ. I challenge anyone. You can't find the body of Christ in the Old Testament. You can't find the body of Christ, the church today, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Not there. The four Gospels. That's the little flock, the kingdom, the Messianic Jews. Even in the book of Acts, 1 through 7, 1 through 9, actually, 7 is when God changed the program, you're still dealing with the church, that kingdom church, that Jewish church. It's not until Paul that God begins dealing with us Gentiles, those of us who are not of the Hebrew people, who are not of Israel, who are not of the Jews. And when you rightly divide the word of truth, you separate those things. This is what God's doing today in the dispensation of grace, okay? The only time God saves you without no, any works, by faith alone, faith plus nothing. That's how God saves you today. James out here, James tells his people, the Jews, is faith plus works. Okay? Before Paul, before the dispensation of grace, as God deals with the earth, is faith plus works. Okay? Well, God is now has a program for the heavenly places he kept hid until he gave to the Apostle Paul. That's what the mystery of Christ is. And what Satan's going to try to do, look at verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you. Look down to verse 15. Having spoiled principalities and powers. God created Adam, the first man, to, re rule, to redeem the earth back unto himself. God created the body of Christ, the last Adam, the, the second man, Christ, to take back the heavens. Satan has usurped God's authority, both on earth, he's the God of this world, Satan, Satan is the God, little g, of this world, right? But he also usurped God's authority in the heavenly places. So look at that verse 15. When he says he spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphant over them in it. When the Lord Jesus Christ, through his death on the cross, let me put that in red, for there's blood, he accomplished something through, through the cross. He redeemed back to God. He reconciled both the earthly government, the government on the earth, and that will be realized at his second coming, but also the heavenly government. And through the cross, the Lord Jesus Christ spoiled and took that back. That's what Paul is saying. Go back to verse 8. He's telling us, the body of Christ, look at verse 8, beware, there's a warning lest any man spoil you. That's us, the body. Now notice how he's going to do it, particularly with the Colossians. Philosophy, the word philosophy means lovers of wisdom. See that word philo, or phila, philo, and then sophia, philosophy, uh, sophia, that means love, lovers, and sophia means wisdom. And what Satan is going to try to use on, on us is wisdom, the world's wisdom. Go with me back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Go back to 1 Corinthians 2. He's going to try to use the wisdom of this world to try to get you away from the truth of God's word. We have different cultures here. 
Uh, Ryan, is glad you guys here. We're going to ask you about the predominant uh, religions uh, during the Q&A uh, over there in, in, in South Korea. And what all those religions have in common is some type of wisdom to, to, to make you higher, to make you a better self, right? To reach some type of nirvana or to ascend. Exactly, but every religion is that. You're going, like the Tower of Babel, they're going to work their way to heaven or work their way to a, something, a higher being. Right. Whether it's reincarnation or whatever, or paradise, it's some type of wisdom that's going to bring you up. But God says beware of that because there's no wisdom but of God. Notice in chapter number, 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, watch what Paul says. The new ages today. The new ageism, but every a religion on this earth, all the Eastern religions, the Oriental religions, all these religions have something that you can do, you put it on you, to lift yourself up to ascend to a higher plane. But it's just a lie from the God of this world, Satan. Right. Because the only wisdom that comes to fruition in the end is the wisdom of God in the mystery, or the scripture, the holy scriptures in, in general. Notice here, verse 7. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 7. Start at verse 6. 1 Corinthians 2, 6. Howbeit we, that's Paul and his ministers, we speak wisdom. God wants us to have wisdom, doesn't he? What is wisdom? Wise. W wise domain. A wise domain, right? Just like a kingdom, a kingdom is a king's domain. Wisdom by the way, what did God give Solomon, King Solomon, in the Old Testament? What did Solomon say? Lord, I don't want riches. I don't want glory. I want wisdom to rule your people, right? And God wants the grace believer to have wisdom so that when we get there, we can rule up there with wisdom. That's what he says here. Verse 6, 1 Corinthians 2, 6. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, or that's spiritually mature. Now watch what Paul says, yet not the wisdom of this world. See, the Greeks seek after this wisdom. The world seeks after this wisdom, right? right. Notice, of this world. Nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. Those, those high principalities and powers that, that, uh, of, of the satanic um, forces and so forth. Uh, the Lord Jesus calls Satan and John the prince of this world. is going to be cast out. He says, that stuff comes to naught. It's nothing. But we, that's the grace believer, Paul and his ministry, speak the wisdom of who? God. You see, the wisdom of God today is in Apostle Paul and in the Word of God. He says, in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom. My question for folks is, what is this hidden wisdom? That's right. Which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Which none of the princes of this world knew. If you're getting wisdom from other other means, it's not God's wisdom because other 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 princes of this world they didn't know this. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of Glory. Had Satan and his his principalities and powers who were spoiled by the cross, had they known what God would accomplish through the blood of that cross, the blood is what reconciles and redeems everything. It's through His blood, His shed blood. And without that shedding of blood, God couldn't reconcile all these things. There's no remission. There you go. He couldn't get out of it. But through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, not only is he he's going to reconcile the earthly places, we now know from the Apostle Paul the heavenly places, and that's where we as members of the body come in. Go with me, if you will, back to Colossians chapter 2. So there's a warning. And Paul is saying that you can be beguiled. You can be spoiled. Look at chapter 2, verse 8 again. If there was no, if there was no way you could be, be spoiled, Paul wouldn't warn us, right? The fact that he warns us, look at verse 8. Beware lest any man, and by the way, Satan is going to use men, preachers, teachers, spoil you through philosophy, lovers of wisdom. Where my fly? Lovers of wisdom. And then vain deceit. That's all the other type of, of, of knowledge out there. It, it's vain. The word vain means empty and useless. That what you mean when ministers take one scripture and get you there? Exactly, exactly. Hey, hello, everybody. When they take one scripture or even a collection of scriptures, 
and give you their interpretation, but not using the Holy Scriptures to do that. Okay? The way God wants the Bible to be read and studied is to compare Scripture with Scripture. It all has to fit. It has to be rightly divided as well. Okay? We're in Colossians chapter 2. Look at verse 8. So here's the warning. If you're a grace believer, God desires for you to have this understanding. Notice what he says here. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, lovers of wisdom, and vain deceit. That's that empty... By the way, they're, they're deceiving you with their words. Right? That's why I never could... That's why I was starved spiritually. That's right. Because they're going to use good words... Go over to Rome. Thank you, Dodie. That's exactly right. Watch this. God uses His Word. He uses His Word. The power is in the Holy Scriptures. Right. Look with me, if you will, in Romans chapter 16. Let me show you how, how this happens. In Romans chapter number 16, remember, not everyone serves the Lord Jesus. These are men who Paul is warning us to stay away from. Verse 17. Look at Romans chapter 16, verse 17. As Paul ends the book of Romans, watch what he says. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause the visions. Now these are grace believers here, and he's going to tell the grace believers they're going to be those who cause the visions. By the way, and offense, they're going to offend God's justice and his righteousness contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. Now what doctrine did the Romans learn? Paul's doctrine. Romans 6, he says, that form of doctrine which was delivered you, you've been obeying from the heart. Paul is our apostle. I've got to get this through. The person that Jesus Christ sent to teach you and I, you and me, what God's doing today is the apostle Paul. By revelation. By revelation. Jesus Christ came out of heaven's glory. I always have, to have this question. Why is Paul in the Bible? If you don't know why Paul's in your Bible, the Lord already had 12 apostles. He already had 12 apostles sitting on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. On that earthly kingdom, there are going to be 12 thrones, okay? The Lord told, told those guys, he said, look, you guys who followed me in, in the regeneration, when the Son of Man comes and sit on the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit on 12 thrones. How many tribes of Israel is it? The 12 tribes. Well, you already had that. Why is Paul on the scene? Because God has a kingdom. God's kingdom is in heaven and earth. The 12 apostles are going to be on the earth. They're going to rule and reign on the earth, Revelation says. When you rightly divide God's word, the mystery is the body of Christ will rule and reign. Paul says if we suffer with him, we shall reign with him. We're going to get crowns of righteousness. That's what God created us for. But you have to understand this mystery. If you don't, you won't qualify to reign, okay? Before Christ, nobody went to heaven. But, well, before, right, exactly, exactly. I was going to say, yeah, before the Lord Jesus Christ showed up, no man went to heaven. Right. People don't think about that. I know. When a Jew in time passed, that Old Testament saint, all back here, right, from Adam here, 4,000 years, when a righteous person, a Jew, a Hebrew, or even before that, when they died, they went to the heart of the earth. They went to paradise, down in the heart of the earth. It's not until the Lord's resurrection and ascension and yea, the message given to Paul, where a person dies in their, in, in their righteousness, trusting Christ, and they go to heaven. Because that's where our, when, when the Lord comes, we're going to meet him where? In the air. We're going to go up there. None of these people ever look to go to heaven. They said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. They're looking for the kingdom to come. We're looking to go. Right. Paul says, you look to heaven. Because before Paul came on the scene, no one ever looked to die and go to heaven. Right. Let me show you. But you got to beware. Look at chapter 16 of Romans, verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark, well, that's identify and point out them which cause divisions and offense is contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. Now notice they already learned, Paul. And what does Paul say? Avoid them. Okay? Avoid them. Why? Verse 18. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. They're believers, 
but they don't serve the Lord. What did we learn earlier? Those who serve the Lord get the reward of the inheritance. They're going to get that joint inheritance with Christ, joint heirs, if you serve them. But if you don't serve them, you're not getting it. These ministers don't serve them, so they're going to go to heaven. They get to heaven. They're brethren, but they won't reign in the heavenly places. Notice verse 18. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. You can be a believer and not serve the Lord Jesus. You can be in ministry and not serve. These are ministers. They're going to suffer loss at the judgment seat. Notice verse 18. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. Which is. Their carnal base desires. desires. Over in Philippians 3, he says their God is their I'm belly. I'm glad you explained that because I never could figure out the belly part. <laughs> it's their own base carnal desires. Right. If you're not, if, if you're in a pulpit teaching, or any capacity, and it's not the mystery, you're not being honest in your heart about the scriptures. Your your goal is to either magnify yourself be, as a man, you know, getting glory from men, or filthy lucre. It's lucrative religion, but that's then when you get to the judgment seat, he's going to say, you didn't serve me. Notice, their belly is their God, and by, now notice how they do it, good words and fair speeches. They sound good, and notice what they do. They deceive the hearts of the simple. The simple. Those that don't know the word. Exactly. That's why you must spend time studying your Bible rightly divided so that they can't get you. If you don't, if you know Bible, but you don't know right how to rightly divide the scriptures, if you mix everything, if you take Matthew, Mark, Luke, and why do you think most churches spend time in the four gospels? Why? Because it was Jesus. Right, because it was Jesus of Nazareth. His story. Right. In his in his earthly ministry. But remember, the Lord Jesus Christ didn't stop speaking once he went up. In Acts, when he went up. He came back down. In Acts 9, the Lord Jesus Christ, he left heaven's glory. He saved the Apostle Paul. Go over to Acts chapter number 9. Go, go, go over to Acts chapter number 9. What most people, when they focus on the four gospels only, or, or mostly, they're forgetting that it's progressive revelation in Scripture. Why are they stopping it? Go, keep going, come on, keep going. The Lord Jesus Christ came back. Look at Acts chapter 9. When he came back, look with me if you will. Speaking of Saul, verse 3. Speaking of Saul, and as he journeyed, Saul is persecuting that little flock, right? And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. By the way, I want you to keep your eye on what's going on in the Middle East. With that, with that Russian, uh, with the Russians... Uh, coming into covenant with the with the with the Syrians, the capital of Syria is Damascus. The king, the the, the, wow. the king, I call him the king because I'm looking at the Bible. But the president of of of, a, of a Syria, uh, Syria, he just turned fifty on September 11th. Interesting, September 11th turned fifty. He was born in Damascus. The Syrian. Mm -hmm. the, the the president of Syria right now. He was born in Damascus. Damascus, Syria. That's going to be the territory where the Antichrist comes after the rapture. Just kind of think about those things. That's interesting. Interesting. As Paul was journeying to Damascus, notice it says, verse 3, And suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven. Now, most of believers, they don't even act like this is in their Bible. But it's there. Why don't you hear more about this? Every time Paul gave his testimony, he went back to this road to Damascus. In Acts 22 and Acts 26, Paul says, let me tell you guys what happened. I was on my way to Damascus, here come the Lord. Nobody talks about that outside of dispensational circles. Watch this, verse 4. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am who? Jesus, whom thou persecuted, it is hard for thee to kick against the prince. The Apostle Paul knew the Old Testament. He knew that there was a Messiah and he would come. 
But he kept fighting against this Jesus, their Messiah. And if you don't recognize that the Lord Jesus Christ came down, he left heaven's glory, he saved Saul, Paul on the road to Damascus, you won't understand your Bible. It won't make sense. Now, we'll, now notice verse number 6. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, that's what a Jew had to say about the Lord Jesus. If they confessed his, him as Lord, and that's what Paul did, what wilt thou have me to do? See, he's ready to serve them. I wish more saints were like that, quite frankly. In, in 19 years as a grace believer, I wish it was more saints. I'm talking about even this message says, I mean, Paul from the day, because he's a, mm, mm, the day he got saved, he said, Lord, what you want me to do? He says, I'm going to tell you, arise and go in the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. I've learned in my time, it's just sad, because, and Chris and I, Chris could testify, most people who, who gain from the ministry hardly give back. It's just a sad fact. But Paul is our pattern. If you're saved today, you should be doing what Paul says, Lord, what would you have me to do? Serve the Lord Jesus in whatever capacity, different ways, but make sure you're serving the Lord in the grace of God. Notice in chapter 9, verse 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way. For he, by the way, let me say this. What if you're new to the grace message? Paul says, As much as lieth in me, I'm ready to do what I got to do, right? Romans, he said, As much as God has given me now, I'm ready to use that little bit to serve him. You'll serve him greater as you grow, but wherever you're at now, Use what you have to serve him in the grace of God. Notice, verse 15, But the Lord said unto him, to Ananias, about Paul, Go thy way, for he, and that's Paul, is a what type of vessel? Chosen vessel. Who chose him? God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ chose Paul. Paul, an apostle, by the commandment of God, Romans 1. God chose Paul to be your apostle. And when you reject that apostleship, his office, you're rejecting God Almighty. Hold your hand there. Hold your hand there. Go over to Romans 1. Go over to Romans 1. Don't take my word for it. Verse 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle separated unto the gospel of God. It is God and the Lord Jesus Christ is the one who called Paul and separated him out for the gospel of God. That's the, the, the good news of the resurrection of his son. If you're saved today, it's by the gospel of the grace of God. You didn't get saved by the gospel of the kingdom preached back here. The gospel of the kingdom was preached before the cross. You got, you got saved by the gospel of the grace of God, how it's the blood of Christ alone, the blood by, by grace through faith plus nothing. Faith plus no works. And that, by the way, that's Paul's gospel. Go back with me if you will. Go to Romans chapter number 16. Go to Romans 16. I'm going to show you about that commandment of the everlasting God, but Paul's gospel is, is involved. Look at Romans 16 verse 25. You won't be established in God's truth. You won't be stable in your faith unless you do it the way God says. It starts with Paul's gospel. Look at, look at Romans 16, 25. Now to him, this is God the Father, that is a power to establish you, to stabilize you, make you strong in your faith. How? According to whose gospel? My gospel. No other man in Scripture uses that term, my gospel. Which is preaching of Jesus well, the, Yeah, the gospel of grace of God. Let me show you something. According to the revelation of the mystery. That's right. Then we're going to see that. Paul says, my gospel. He personalizes it. Two, three times. Two times in Romans. Romans 2, he says, according to my gospel. In 2 Timothy 2, he says, my gospel. Three times Paul says, my gospel. No other man says, my gospel. By the way, Peter doesn't even say, my gospel. Peter's an apostle. Peter's the head apostle to Israel. James never says, my gospel. Paul says, my gospel. But look what else. Verse 6, 25. And the preaching, the warning, the teaching, that's what we're doing now. This is in your sanctification, the warning and teaching of Jesus Christ. So we're preaching the Lord Jesus, but how? 
according to or in line with the what? The revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. So it couldn't have been in the Gospels. Nobody else knew it. It wasn't in the Gospels. But now, in the dispensation of grace to the grace apostle Paul, is made what? Manifest. But wait, there's more. What about the rest of the scripture? Look at it. Verse 26. And by the scriptures of the prophets. That's where the Old Testament comes in. The Old Testament, by the way, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are Old Testament brown. I know people put it in the New Testament, but he's made of the, a woman made under the law. The Old Testament, I mean, you got to at least get to the cross, to the end of the Gospels, right? This is the New Testament in my blood. But all of this is Old Testament ground. But God wants us to know that information. It, it helps our edification. Let's look at it. He says, verse number 26, But now is made manifest, speaking of the mystery given to Paul, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according... Now, here's what I want you to see. Whose commandment? According to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known not just to one nation, Israel, but how many nations? All nations. Korea, United States, Every, everywhere, all nations have to listen to the Apostle Paul for the obedience of faith. Do you want to show your faith to God? You have to learn how to do it based upon what the Apostle Paul says. Go back to Colossians. And Satan's going to try to keep you from doing that. Go back to Colossians chapter 2. That's why Paul says beware. Colossians is a book of service. Colossians is a book of service. It's not like Ephesians, just like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I love you, I love you. God the Father looks down all my air, mm -hmm, I love all my saints, oh, mm -hmm, I love you. Please serve me. The Ephesians 1, 2, 3, all the first half of Ephesians, there's six chapters, he goes, I love you, I love you, I love you. Now he gets to chapter 4, now serve me. Mm -mm. Colossians is, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you want to serve me? Or do you appreciate me? That's what Colossians is about. It's a book of service. Now, if you serve the Lord Jesus Christ, you will receive the reward of the inheritance. You will be reigning with him, okay? You will reign with him. And one of the things I think we, we miss over here in the United States of America, in, in the Western culture as well, but not, maybe not in England, we don't have a, we don't, what do they call that when you have a king? Uh, a monarchy, yes, yes. Um, I was telling Krista, <coughs> I was looking at the Saudi Arabia, um, you know how these, these Muslims go over and they have to do what they call a hajj, they have to go over to Mecca at least once, once in their life, and I don't know if you guys remember, last month, there was like 1,500 Muslims died in a stampede. Well, Iran, Iran lost most of those Muslims. They're blaming the Saudi Arabian uh, family, King, King's family, because they, they oversee this thing, okay, this religious thing. And I was reading about this, and the Saudi Arabian king, all his sons are princes, and they represent him throughout his kingdom and in other people's lands. So based upon the firstborn and, and who he trusts, in that entire territory, he puts his, his sons, his princes, at this territory, this territory, this territory, this territory. And then I told Krista, he got some of his sons who go out and ambassadors for his kingdom, but they live in other territories. And I told Krista, those are the ones that he don't like as much. <laughs> he keeps the ones he likes in his territory, running his territory close to him. He says, all right, all right, son, you go out there somewhere. You go out there. Be, because this is the guy I got to deal with. Anyway, the point is, I kind of saw how, they, how the kingdoms are set up. If we knew that type of stuff, we would understand what it means to reign and so forth. I think part of the, the, the problem people don't understand is just how our culture, how our, we're, we're, we are a republic, it's just different. Everybody got a say in everything. You can vote your, no, you, don't, you can't do that in a, in, a, in a kingdom. You do what the king says. You do what the ruler say, okay? That's probably why we can't get this this in our minds over here. No wonder everybody think everybody gonna reign. 
Because he over here, I don't like that, so I'm going to put, no, shut up. I'm a king. Power, king, word, be quiet. Go, go banish, you're banished. Go over somewhere. For real. I think if we understood, and it's so funny, right before we moved here, about four and a half years ago, I was just starting to unpack those things from the Old Testament, but I had to build up this ministry, so I had to put that on hold. Boom. But I, I could see, I wanted to, I may still do that. We'll still do that. But that's okay. You can get it from the scriptures. Go with me back to Colossians. So beware, verse 8, lest any man spoil you. That means to take what's rightfully yours. God wants to give you this joint inheritance. He wants you to reign with him. But don't let Satan, through men, take your crown away. Don't let him take it. And he's going to use philosophy, vain deceits, good words, and fair speeches. Notice in verse 8, after the tradition of men, the number one thing that's going to mess you up is tradition. Which is other people's doctrines, right? It's, my family has done it this way for this long. My church has done it this way for this long. The Lord Jesus Christ told those people, he says, his, his, his disciples were eating one day without washing their hands. The Pharisees look and said, why do your disciples eat without washing their hands? The Lord says, why do you guys break the commandment of God and not honor your parents? <laughs> he says, you make the word of God of none effect through your tradition. And tradition, if it's a religious tradition, most people don't come to this truth because their mom, their dad, their uncle, their grandpa, their grandpa didn't teach this, didn't know this, mom and dad don't know this. Well, that's between them and God. You, you're going to be held accountable. When you get to judgment seat, you're not going to say, well, Lord, my, my parents didn't. Well, that's what he'll judge them. You are held accountable. Traditions of men. Now, not all tradition is bad, okay? Paul says that we can have, let me see, let me see here. See how far it is over here. He talks about tradition. He, Paul talks about tradition. Ryan, if you can look that one up for me. But Paul talks about tradition. If the tradition comes from the apostle Paul, it's good. But if it's just from men, by the way, the tradition that Paul puts down, that comes from the Lord. That comes from up here. It's revelation. It's from revelation from the Lord Jesus. But if your religious tradition, your family tradition, anything stands in your way, that's Satan is saying, yeah, let that tradition be above the word. And you'll be, you'll lose, you, you'll be spoiled out of your crown. Did you get that one yet, Ryan? Let me know when you get it. Verse talking 8. about the one that talks about traditions of men. Well, that's, that's here. Uh, there's another one where Paul talks about keep the tradition as we get into it. That's all right. If oh, you get, oh, oh uh, the traditions of my fathers in, in Galatians? In no, but, but that's a good one there. That's, that's Paul saying those religious traditions of Judaism, they're going to keep me from the Lord Jesus. i got to keep those, let those go. Yeah. And today it would be Mormons or all of those. Look, not only any of those religious, Mormon, Jehovah's Witness, even Christendom, Christian denominations. Bapt okay, your denomination teaches that water baptism is a requirement. Maybe they don't think it's a requirement for salvation, but they say, well, it's a way that you follow Jesus. And That's a tradition. That's just tradition. Okay. Paul says there's one baptism, Ephesians 4, 5, and it's not water. It's by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. It's a spiritual one. Are you talking about 2 Thessalonians 2? Yes, 2 Thessalonians. Look at 2 Thessalonians. Thank you, Ryan. 2 Thessalonians 2. Verse 15. Thank you, bro. That's the one I was thinking of. Sometimes I don't have it in my notes, but it's, it's right there. Look at 2 Thessalonians 2.15. Not every tradition is, is wrong. Now, he's not saying, look, if you have certain family traditions, you know, we understand, you know, customs and so forth. Individual families have certain customs. But if it's a religious custom or tradition that keeps you from the truth of the scriptures rightly divided, the mystery, you have to say to that, uh-uh, I'm not going to keep that tradition because you make the word of God of non effect through your tradition, the Lord says. Kind Forget like the tradition. The church I went to was doing every week by saying the, the, the prayer. Oh, they did the Lord. Yeah. yeah, that's just tradition. But when you think about it, why would a a a, 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 a why would a, the church today be praying, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth? 
when everything that Paul says is we're praying, Lord, take us home, rapture us out, take us, looking from heaven, he's going to take us in the air. We're saying, Lord, come get us. <laughs> come get us, Lord. The yeah, Jews, the Jews in the tribulation period, in the time of Jacob's trouble, they're going to say, as the Iranians, as the Syrians, as all these Muslim nations that surround them under the Antichrist, when, when they're about to die, I just heard Iran now has is testing ballistic missiles. There's only... <laughs> so as soon as we sign that 10-year ten, ten contract with them, they don't even wait. They, they already had the missile written. Now they just shoot it. Because what they're going to do, they're going to say, let's see how far we can shoot this missile. Oh yeah, it'll, it'll reach Israel. And they're going to get some nuclear war, warheads, put it on the missile and shoot it to Israel to wipe them off his and that. That's what they go. President, that's what they're going to do. John Kerry, that's what they're going to do. Let me tell you before the Lord take us home, that's what they're going to do. Give them a warning. Brian, put this up there and just say, what's going to happen <laughs> after the rapture? And, you're and then dot, dot, dot. Told you so. <laughs> no, you don't put that on there. I'll be, <laughs> she goes, dot, dot, dot. Told you so. <laughs> no, I say, dot, dot, dot. Here's what to do now. Okay. I'm, I'm gracious to him. I want to tell him how he said it. Notice here. When you were asking about okay. the traditional yes. men, uh, verse I thought you were talking about the, the Mark one, because there's one in Mark that says that too. Same kind of concept. Give, give me that one, Ryan. Mark 7, 8. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men. I love that one. You guys get that? The Lord says, for laying aside, we're going to have to look at that one. That was Mark what? 7? Seven? 7 verse 8. Okay, before we go there, look at look at 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 15. Not all traditions are bad, okay? If the traditions were given down through the Apostle Paul, it's okay. Because, notice he says, 2 Thessalonians, by the way, we're going to teach the book of First and 2 Thessalonians on, uh, on Sundays. We're in 1 Thessalonians, but we're going to teach 2 Thessalonians if the Lord tarries as well, okay? Here we go. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 15. Therefore, brethren, stand fast. That means don't waver. You ever get to the point in your life because of the policy of you? You said, man, it's just too hard being a grace believer. Nobody believes this stuff. My own family rejects me. My friends reject me. All my friends, so-called friends in the old church, they don't want me. You think Paul didn't go, go through that? You think the Lord Jesus didn't go through that? You think every Jew who believed Jesus was the Messiah, their families would have funerals for them, but they weren't dead. But because they left Judaism to go to that carpenters, to that way, it happens to all believers. It's going to happen to you guys. You believe the truth, but notice, when you suffer with him, you shall also reign with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign. Listen, God knows truth is going to be rejected. If you are holding over a truth, you're going to be rejected. Put it in your mind, I'm going to be rejected, I'm going to be rejected. Mm -hmm. But it's for a purpose. It's for the Lord Jesus. Let's look, watch this. Uh, chapter 2, verse 15. Therefore, brethren, stand fast. Oh, look at verse 14. The therefore, every, by the way, every time you see therefore, my mind is trained to look at the verse previous because it's going to tell you why he says stand fast. Watch this. Whereunto he called you by our gospel. By the way, that's Paul's gospel. And what's Paul's gospel? What's the end? To the obtaining of the what? Glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul's gospel, the aim, the aim is that you receive that crown of glory. But you can only do it if you suffer with him. And that, that major suffer is this, guys. Rejection. People are not going to believe this stuff that you're telling them. And because you believe it, they're going to not want to be around you. I'm telling you, you just get ready for it. 19 years as a grace believer, that's been the experience. Very few people are going to ride with you. Suffer for glory. And the main suffering will be rejection by your friends, your family. That's the way it is. But it's for, notice verse 14. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the what? Glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to reign with him. But because of that, verse 15, Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold. You know, that word hold has to do with keep them, 
guard them, protect them, the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. As you study out the Apostle Paul, you'll see the traditions that God wants. It's not the traditions of men, it's the traditions of God. Brian, what's that passage in Mark? I like that one. Mark chapter 7. Mark 7. Thank you, dear. Go to Mark 7. Mark 7, 8. Listen how the Lord says to his people, to, to, the, to the Jews of his day. You know, people, when they talk about the Lord Jesus, they just talk like he's this meek guy. He was. Chris and I, we laugh, we, we, we study personalities. Being in ministry, dealing with people, we study personalities, and as introverts ourselves, we study people. We can see introverts, extroverts, social people, talkative people, quieter people. We look at all that. Well, the Lord Jesus Christ, he had all the personalities in one. However you dealt with him, he dealt with you. So if you were humble towards him, he was kind and meek. But if you come here, you demand of him, it'll say they demand of him, he'll just stick it to him, man. Let me show you what he did here. Mark 7, <coughs> verse 5. Let's just get the, this, no, this is the one I was talking about, right? Start at verse 1. Let's just get the context. Look, Mark 7, verse 1. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. So these are the unbelieving religious leaders of Israel. Verse 2, Mark 7, 2. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashed hands, they found fault. Now look at these religious dudes. They're watching them eat, and because they didn't wash their hands, they're indignant about it. Watch this. Verse 3, here's to tell you why. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, <clears throat> except they wash their hands off, eat not, holding the tradition of the who? So they keep, <clears throat> they keep these traditions of washing, washing, washing. Well, the Lord Jesus Christ, he wasn't having none of it. Because he knows what makes a man defiled is not what's from the outside, but what's inside. See? He said, you don't have to constantly wash your hands. That's just religion. God's looking for you to worship him in your heart. Okay, watch this. Verse 4. And when they came, excuse me, and when they come from the market, the Pharisees, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be which they have received to hold. See, they learn this from their parents and from the elders of Israel, and they just they just go through the motions, go through the motions. You ever know what religion is? It's just going through the motions. I hope that's not any of us, man. I hope you hear, not because you just go up, oh, it's Sunday, it's Wednesday, this gotta go. I hope you come to hear the word of the Lord. These people, most people go to church on Sundays. That's what we do. We go to church. When somebody find out I'm a preacher, and I don't even tell them because I don't talk to people outside of here. Somebody else will tell them, oh, I heard you're a preacher. The next thing they say is, oh, I need to be going to church again. Yeah. <laughs> say it. It's a tradition, right? It's not about going to church. It's becoming a member of the true church, the body of Christ. They need to get saved. And then, yes, come and learn and grow. Let me show you this. Verse 4. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not, and many other things there be, which they have received to hold, as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels. I wish they come to my house, man. I hate washing dishes. That's why I let Christy do it. <laughs> But I did watch this when I was young, my grandmother's house. That was, oh, I hated that. These Pharisees are hooked you up, boy. The verse 5. <laughs> then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Now look at these guys come to the Lord Jesus. Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of elders, but eat bread when I'm washing hands? It'll be like somebody coming up to you guys, Why don't your church water to baptize? Everybody else does. Now let me show you how the Lord handled that. Verse 6, and he, that's the Lord Jesus, said unto them, that I can see myself saying that, I said, well, let me well say Isaiah the prophet. Oh, man, well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites. Oh, he just give it to him. As it is written, as it is written. A guy emailed me. He said, Brother Ron, why doesn't God talk to us today like he did back in the Bible days? I said, because... God is a God of a book. Back here, he wasn't finished writing his book.
So he would reveal to the prophets his word and they would write it down. When he gave the Apostle Paul these 13 books, when he wrote 2 Timothy, Paul put it together. Last of all, he was seen in me. All scripture today is given by inspiration of God. God is the God of a book. And I told the guy, if, if, if God was just appearing to people, they would have to write it down in the book. You just keep, you know, but there's a book. How because you reach everybody. Exactly. And so he wants, he wants one book that everybody can come and open so that Daniel and David and everybody, they can't just say, God told me this. Because I, I, I would do this. I'm going to tell you, God told me see, for you to give me $100. <coughs> yes, thus saith the Lord. Yes, I'm <laughs> Now, how are you going to know I didn't say that if God just appeared to everybody? Now we got a book. And I can't come and say, well, God says you got to tithe. Now, God told Israel to tithe. It wasn't money. It was never money. But remember, people use the tithe. They don't rightly divide. Today, God says grace given is you give to support the ministry so that the grace message can get, we can have a place to, to meet and get it out there. That's why we have a book. You don't teach a tithe because that was not for the body of Christ. It's for Israel. And it wasn't money anyway. But you'll never hear religious guys tell you that. You'll never hear them tell you that. Never. I had a guy ask me, he said, he's, he's, a, he's a Baptist minister. His father was the senior Baptist preacher. And he was, he was listening to our ministry. You remember this day, I think. And he said, man, I, I got to the point, I had to ask my father, Father, if, if we're talking about God's grace today, he had to tell his father this. Go ask his father. This is hard. This, the relationship between fathers and sons, especially in ministry, this guy says, I had to ask my father, Brother Ron, Father, if we're teaching people that God is, is dealing with us under grace, why are we preaching a tithe to our people? That's a hard conversation to have with your father, the preacher. What did his father say? Well, son, you know, that's just the, the tradition. Tradition. <laughs> he said, no, son, that's how we keep the coffers full, bro. Shut <laughs> 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 up. Hey, man, I've been, I know people have been back there counting the money. And they, I had a brother, look, I've been in the room. One brother told me they'd be back there counting. Woo, this is good all the day, man. Yeah. Knowing that they're lying to the people. They're lying to them about the time. Mm. That's what the Lord, look here, verse 5, verse 6. Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written. And when I told that brother, I said, look, God wants us to depend on his written word. When Satan came to the Lord, what did the Lord say? It is what? Written. God is a God of a book. But rightly divided. Rightly divided now, because we have the body of Christ and Israel. Okay, here we go. Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written. This people honoreth me with their lips. But what's the problem? Their heart is far from me. When you're just going through the religious motion, you just say, ah, oh, we got to do this. This is how we do it. Your heart is far from God. God doesn't want your tradition. He doesn't want you to go through the motion. He wants your heart. He wants your heart. Verse 7. How be it in vain. Remember that vain deceit, Dodie? Yep. Do they worship me? And I put some quotes over there. Oh, this is it. Teaching for doctrines... The commandments of who? Did y'all get that? You know what religion does? They take their tradition and teach that as the word and throw aside the word of God. Get that. That's why with you guys, we look at the verses. We look at the scripture. Look, look at this, verse 7. How be it in vain they do worship me. That, those are the guys that when they get before the Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in thy name? Didn't we cast out devils in thy name? He's going to say, depart from me, ye that work me. I never knew thee. Because their heart wasn't with the Lord. They taught for doctrines the commandments of men. Verse 8. Oh. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of man as the washing of pots and cups and many other things. By the way, interesting they're dealing with washings, waters. People will look what Paul says, Christ sent me not to baptize. And they'll lay that aside and say, well, we got a water baptized. People will see that there's only one baptism in Ephesians 4 or 5. I have, I have people, I said, now there's one baptism. Paul tells us what that is. One spirit, are we all baptized? Where is water? Where does water come in? It's a water. That's two then, and you've been broke the commandment of God. 
broke the commandment of God. God said one baptism. That's what he's saying. They lay aside, verse 8, the commandment of God. You hold the tradition of men. And that's what Paul says. Don't let them beguile you. we got about eight minutes. Go back to uh, Colossians 2. So that's the warning. Colossians 2. I thought I would get down to verse 10. That ain't happening tonight. <laughs> We're going to do part two next week. All right. Verse, verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men. Okay? We just went over the traditions. Let those traditions go. Unless it's from Paul. Here's another way. After the rudiments of the world. What is that? A rudiments are the basic principles of this world. Go down to verse 20. Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are you subject to ordinances? Now, what is the rudiments of the world? That's this. So the first thing was the religious stuff, okay? Now Paul's going to deal with the other extreme. It's the, it's, the, it's the peer pressure from the world. The world, the lost world says, hey, you, everybody does this, you need to do this. I'll give you a one from our, this is our personal thing for my wife and I, homeschooling. We don't ever tell anybody what they should do with their child. We do what we want. There's not a day goes by when I'm with my seniors, many of them ex teachers, these are 90-something year old ladies, Soon as soon as fall here, they say, oh, so is your little girl in school? I go, yes, she is. She is. <laughs> and as long as they don't ask where she goes, I'm fine. <laughs> but someone say, hey, what school does she go to? I said, she's homeschooled. And they go, oh. Oh, what about socialization? I said, have you ain't ever seen my daughter? She's an old social little girl. She doesn't like that. <laughs> no. No, he said, she's all. But, but here's the point. The, the, the way the world says, the rudiments means the basic principles of this world. The world says, Get the child. Well, it might be different in the Korean culture, but then over in America, it's like you have a baby, you you put her in daycare, you go back after three months, so she spent time there, and then you go to work, and, you gotta, it's a, and then they gotta go to kindergarten, and public school, first grade, second grade, third grade, and then high school and college, and blah, blah, blah. they have four hundred thousand dollars student loan debt, and then they don't get the job in that field. Our daughter gonna go to cosmetology school or something about fifteen when she's out of high school, home school. And she's going to be working uh, and like that. And what I'm saying is, don't let the world pressure you into doing things their way, the course of this world. The world's going to say, this is how it goes, and you're going to have to fight against it like a sentence. Or like, and then another example of keeping your children oh, since they're 18. Oh, yes. and, 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 and we, this is the crazy, thank you, Rondell. And we could do this all day. But the point is, that's a good one. What Rondell said to Dodie was that, People, once the child turns 18 because they're legal, no child is ready to be on their own at 18. None. They're babies. Other cultures laugh. The Middle Eastern cultures done it. We saw that. There were two Iranian Persian guys, right? They were sitting How talking. How old is it now? The legal age of 18, but nobody gets it now. No. Check this out, Jody. Chris and I was watching a show with some Iranian guys, and they're sitting there talking. And they go, these white people over here in America, they keep their children out at 18. <laughs> They're like, how stupid is that? No, you're not supposed to do that. You take care of your children. Listen, oh, if we did the way the word, the word said, that little Jada Lynn, until she gets married, she is under her father's dominion, under my roof. And if she doesn't get married until she's 25, 30, whatever, she could be under our roof. Kicking out your children, but that's what the world says. The world says once they turn. I know people. I know people who they're counting down. It's day 17 and 360 days. They count down, shaking off. 18, get out. All right. You ever see commercial? They they drop their children off to college. The parents throw them out. They speed up. They go. We free. That's what people feel. They free. No, you ain't free. That's your baby. You brought in this world. Take care of them. Listen. Thank you, Rhonda. That was good. But when he talks about the rudiments of the world, he's just saying yes. The wisdom, how, how the world does things, we got to fight against that, God. You have to do what's wise for yourself and your children in the ministry. You got we, We're raising Jada Lynn. This is our thing. We're homeschooling her because we want her to learn. I want her, I want her to teach up in the nurture, nurture and the admonition of Christ. I don't want the world teaching her that she came from some evolutionary nonsense. She came from God, and they're going to teach her that in school. 
I, I don't want the world telling her what they want. They want to program and train her. And Krista and I will suffer financially. And whatever you have to do, that we're going to teach her about the Lord. Okay? Now, again, this is us. Everybody do what they want. you got to do what's best, your conscience from the Word. But don't let the world, that's what he's saying. Look, verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. How will the Lord Jesus Christ, how would the mind of Christ deal with this? That's what each and every one of us have to do. But you can only know that by spending time in the word of Christ. That's my part in the ministry, to teach you guys how God's word says to do it. You take God's word, and you, you're not going to be like Christ and I. You do it the way the mind of Christ and the, and, the, and the wisdom of Christ in your situation. I'm here to help. People ask me, Chris and I, one night, we just wrote down all the couples we have over the year. Man, and then even me, before I met her, seven years before I met her, was, we, we, had, we had double pages, man. <laughs> we were like, we were sitting there thinking, oh, I forgot them to, you know. And what we're there to, as a couple, we say, hey, here's our, here's our thoughts, and here's how we handle that, but they got to handle it how, how they want to. But the rudiments of the world is how the course of this world does it. And what God and Paul, as we end, they want us to develop the mind of Christ through the word of God, rightly divided, and then apply that wisdom in each detail of our life. We'll be here to help. That's what we're here for. But everybody has to do that work of faith and, do, and, and, and believe the word of God. Yep. If you're listening and you never had anyone love you enough to ask you, you know, do you know for sure if you're going to go to hell or heaven? By the way, if you don't know for sure you're going to go to heaven, you, you're not going, most likely. I'm not saying you didn't get saved in some time in the past, but you want God wants you to know for sure. Today, God saves us by the blood of His Son on the cross, by grace through faith plus no works. You're saved forever, no works, forever. Good works or bad works come after, and those don't affect your salvation, they affect your what? Reward. You can suffer loss, but you yourself will be saved if we believe not, he abided faithful. He can't deny himself. You're a member of his body. But don't miss out. Don't be beguiled. Paul says beware. Don't be spoiled of your reward, okay? And we'll talk more about that if you have questions during the Q&A or when we talk about it next week, okay? Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ and life of him. We thank you for the warning from our apostle. Uh, I thank you, Father, as the position of a preacher to warn and teach the saints. Father, our goal is to please you, is to glorify you, to, to obey you, to obedience of faith. But the only way we can do it is by knowing your word, Father, which means we have to give attendance to reading, to study to show ourselves approved unto you, as workmen being not ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We need to teach our children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, those of us who have children. Um, the women share it with the other women. Brother, men, share with other men. We need to comfort and edify and encourage one another, exhort one another. That's why we have this ministry. Father, may our hearts be not like those Pharisees who, who approached God, but it was vain. Their heart was far. May we, Father, not be religious, not be of traditions of men, but may our hearts be sought towards you and your Apostle Paul, the doctrine for us today, the doctrine is according to God. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to, to serve you. We look forward to the return of our Lord where we receive his reward of the inheritance jointly uh, and reign with him. Thank you for that blessed hope. In Christ's name, amen.